Hey up guys, if you've seen any of my recent videos where I talk about major key and major scales and that kind of thing, you might be wondering about the minor because the minor is essentially the other side of the same coin which is the major key. In this tutorial what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive into the minor key and show you where it comes from because a lot of people seem to be confused about it. Let's go straight to pen and paper and I'll show you how to work out where the minor comes from. It's really simple and I'm sure you'll benefit a lot from this. Okay guys, so here we are. We've got our blank piece of paper as usual. And the first things first, what we have to do is we have to understand that the minor, this is the minor key. Notice I write that with a little m, not a capital M, minor, because it is lesser than major. This is the way to think about it. Where the heck does that come from? So here's what we've got to do. We've got to first show you how it is related because you may have heard of the minor being called the relative minor. This will explain why it's called the relative minor. So let's take a key and what we're going to do is I'll do it in two keys for you here just so that you can see how it works through all 12 keys. So let's look at this. We're going to do this in the key of C good old C major and what I'm doing is I'm writing the Roman numeral chords for the key of C major. Now, if you haven't seen any of this stuff before and this is new to you, then look in the backlog of videos that is up here. I'll put a link to the playlist there. But needless to say, uppercase Roman numerals mean a major chord and then lowercase Roman numerals means a minor chord. And then you'll see we've got this odd one here. It looks like a minor chord with a degree symbol. That is a diminished chord. So essentially what I can do is I can use that information above there to tell me what these chords are. And I'll just write them all out so it's nice and easy. So we get C major, we get D minor, little m means minor, E minor is chord three, Chord four is F, chord five is G, chord six is A minor because it's lowercase there. And then we get B diminished. Now that's pretty simple. We've talked about this stuff before. Now I like to divide these up so that you can see how these are grouped. In the major key, you get three major chords. Those are called your primary triads. Those are the primary triads. Then we get three minor chords. These minor chords are the secondary triads. And then what happens is we get this chord. This is the leading note chord, and this is a diminished chord. And it always lands here at number seven. This is chord seven, it always lands there. Here's what we've got to do. We've just got to think of the chords as being in a queue. Now C is at the first spot in the queue. D minor is in the second spot. E minor is in the third spot. The F is the fourth spot. The G is the fifth spot, A minor is the sixth spot, and B diminished is at the seventh spot. So what we do is we take this chord here, chord number six. This, if we're playing in the major, you may see this called the relative minor. But what the heck does that mean? What happens is A minor becomes the most important chord. So this is the major key. And then what we're going to do is we're going to arrange these into the minor key. And it's pretty simple, guys. All we do is we keep the same sequence of chords, but we start on chord six. However, what we have to do is we have to name that as chord one. Notice I spelt chord one with lowercase there because it's a lowercase meaning minor. So this means that we have a key of A minor. This is the relative minor. So let's put that there and let's take these and we'll just transfer these over. So chord seven becomes a chord two. Now we can see that it's got a diminished. So we're going to keep that diminished on there. You can start to see that there is a thing happening here. Now we've got to chord seven. So what we have to do is we have to go all the way back to chord one. This is going to be the C chord. But watch what I do here, guys. I write the chord three with uppercase Roman numerals because this denotes that it is a major triad, major chord, whichever you want to call it. Next, let's take D minor and E minor. Well, you can see that D minor and E minor, they are minor, so we have to write them in Roman numerals. We would usually write this chord five with lowercase there if it is the relative minor chord five. There is something that I'm going to do at the end of this that will tidy it all up because there's something wrong with this chord. 
and I'll show you in a minute. But the next chord we have is F and G, these same two chords here. So we get chord six, and then we get chord seven. If you remember, when I talked about the major key before, we looked at it from this pattern of it going step, step, half step, 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 half step. Now the thing is, what happens is this all changes when we move down here. A minor becomes the first one. So between A minor and the B, we get a step. I'm just going to get to the crux of this. This is how I learned this because I'm very visual. And for me, this really worked well. I thought of this as being what are called bulldog's teeth. <laughs> now you can see that looks like the incisor teeth. These look like the fangs. So this is the way that I remembered it. A whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. But what we've got is we've got one missing. So what we do is we've got a wonky tooth bulldog. So that's the other tooth there. So this is the order that we need to remember that this is what I call bulldog's teeth because it's very visual. If you imagine that you had a bulldog, I'll draw a quick one here. It might not look like a dog, but we'll have a go. <laughs> right. OK, so there's your bulldog. But as you can see, the pattern is the teeth. That's the way I kind of look at it. They should be facing up, actually. And you can do that. You can turn those up the other way. So what we can do is we can apply this to here. Now, this is what brings in that mistake that I said that I was going to show you. Doing this, what it does is it means I have to amend the Roman numerals. I have to sort these out. And it's really important that you do this because you, what you're doing is you're retaining the scale information as part of this sequence. Because if we took the notes out of these chords here and we just had A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that would be the A minor scale. Remember, the scale is the ingredients for the chord. So if we take that there, A minor to B is a step, but B to C is a half step. So what we have to do is we have to take this chord three and we have to add a flat to it because that is the flat third chord. And that tells you that it is the flat third relating to that note there, the first note. So first, second, flat third. You would remember that as part of your scale formula for the minor. So we've got root, second, flat third there. Now, next, let's just draw that in there. That tells us bulldog's teeth are going to help us out here. So we've got C to D minor. That's a tone. These are fine. We're, we're OK on this. Then what happens is we get a half step here, which means we pull back a half step here. So the distance between there and there is a minor six or a flat six. Let's add the four and five and that's six, but we've got to amend that flat to it. So this helps to keep that minor scale formula within the chords as well. So you don't get lost and you don't get stuck. If I do this here, you can see that that's a whole step. And if this is a flat six chord, then this is a flat seven chord. And the extra tooth that I mentioned takes us back to a minor. Um, and you can see there's a whole step in between there as well. So that would be going back to chord one. Now, another thing that we can do is if a minor is the relative minor, what we can do is we could think of chord three in the minor key as being the relative major. Now, it's not common practice, but um, I think it's very useful to be able to see that and how that goes around. Now, this works, like I say, for every key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another key for you here right now. And we'll do it in the key of, let's say, F major. So F major, we get chord one, chord two, chord three, chord four, chord five. We've got chord six got chord seven, which is that diminished chord. Now what I'm going to do, taking that major scale formula of step, step, half step, 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 and then half step, which takes us back to chord one. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill this in. Remember, if that's F, then that's F as well. So let's just write out all the alphabet letters as they go in sequence. So we get F, G, A, B, C, D, E, and then we get back to F again. Nice and easy. 
But the thing is we're going to do is we're just going to check this. We're going to look between F and G. Is that a step? Yes, it is. OK, so that's fine. We don't need to change anything. G to A. Is that a step? Yes, it is. It's a two fret distance. Yes. A to B. That is a step. And what I need to do is I need to have a half step here. So that means that this B needs to be flattened. So that becomes a B flat. So we've got B flat there. And if you remember that B and C are next door to each other, by making that flat, then what that does is that opens that up there so that we get a whole step in between those. So that C is brilliant. It's golden. Right. So C to D, that's a step. D to E, that's a step and e to f that is a half step so the only note we needed to change in that is that b flat brilliant now we know what we have got there so this is the scale of f major let's turn that into chords we know that this roman numeral here means major this means minor so let's turn that g into a minor this means minor so let's turn that a into a minor that's major there so we don't need to do anything to that this one here, that's chord five, that's major, don't need to do anything there. This is chord six, that's D minor. Then we get E diminished, you see, because we carry that over there as well. So what we can do is we can see our relative minor on chord six is the D minor. So let's just make that the start of the cue for this minor key here. Remember, this is the major and this is the minor. And like I said earlier on, it's like two sides of the same coin. You could even think it's a little bit like the whole yin and yang principle. So if you had that, then, you know, you could think that one would be major, one would be minor. So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea. There is a duality, but there is a unity between the whole of the two. And I'm getting mystical now, which I don't want to. Let's get into this. So we've got D minor. This becomes chord one and that's the most important chord in that bunch there. So remember what I did with those minor and major Roman numerals. Two is diminished. Three is flat because what we're doing is we're retaining that half step there. And then what happens is we get four, we get five, we get six, which is flat. We get seven, which is flat to retain that information there. Look, we get that bulldog's teeth just sits there nicely. And to complete it, we can take, take it all the way to being called one again there, just like we did with the major here, F to F. Well, let's do this D to D. So we've got that D minor at the end there. D minor, up a step, we get E diminished. No surprises here because this is the same chord. Look, you're just moving along one. Shuffle them along one. Imagine they're waiting to go into the turnstiles at a football match. So here we get F here, which you can see. We remember we called this one the relative major. So that links all the way back over to that. Chord four, chord five, we get G minor. And then we get A minor. Then we get B flat. And then we get C. So we've completed all that there. Worth noting is that in the minor key, chords 1, 4 and 5, just like the major key, are the same tonality. Look, the major key, 1, 4 and 5 are majors. In the minor key, the 1, 4 and 5 are all minor chords. There's more to come with this minor key thing, but what we needed to do is just look at it there, work it out in a fresh key so you could get your head around it. I wish somebody had told me about this when I started playing the guitar because it would have saved me years of struggle and frustration. But the thing is, knowing where the minor comes from is only half of the story. We have to turn theory into practical stuff that we can use on the guitar, which is what I get into in this next lesson here. Click on there to watch it.